Hello and welcome to Star Diary, the podcast from the makers of BBC Sky at Night magazine. You can subscribe to the digital edition of the magazine by visiting iTunes, Google Play or Apple News, or to the print edition by visiting skyatnightmagazine.com. Greetings listeners, and welcome to Star Diary, a weekly guide to the best things to see in the Northern Hemisphere's night sky. As we are based here in the UK, all times are in BST. In this episode, we'll be covering the coming week from the 30th of September to the 6th of October. I'm Ezzy Pearson, the magazine's features editor, and I'm joined today by astronomer Katrin Rayner. Hello, Katrin. Hi, Ezzy. How are you doing? I'm doing well. I'm looking forward to see what we've got going on in the last couple of days of September and moving on into October. Well, the moon is waning all week to a new moon on the 2nd of October, but the 30th is shaping up to be a great day with three planets well-placed and at their best in the morning sky. And there's actually going to be an annular eclipse this week. Unfortunately, the Northern Hemisphere won't be able to see it, but it's worth a mention. The moon is waning all week and will only be 6% lit on the 30th. And there's going to be a new moon on the 2nd of October. And as I've just previously mentioned, I would like to give the sun a quick mention here because... On the 2nd, there will be an annular solar eclipse, which, yes, a shame we're not going to see it. It's only going to be visible over parts of the Pacific Ocean, southern Chile and southern Argentina. You could probably watch it online if you wanted to. Yes, there will be videos of it online. We'll have that over on our website, I am sure, skyatnightmagazine.com. So if people want to have a look at that, they can do so there. Also, we do have a couple of good eclipses that will be coming our way in the coming years. I think there's going to be three in a row that are going to be going through Spain starting in 2026. We might not catch this one, but we've got a lot of really good eclipses coming in the next couple of years. So watch this space. I would like to try and go to Spain in 2026, but I can imagine prices are already pretty high already. So 2026, 2027, I think there is another one in 2028. I don't think that one is as good. I'm not even sure if it's a total eclipse, but I just know that they're going to have three in a row. (laughs) And Spain's not that far away, really, is it, from the UK? So there's no excuse. No, it's not. And there's one of them, I can't remember which way around it is, because there's one that's going like down through Spain, and that's going to be visible in a lot of different places. And then there's one which is sort of going just across the bottom of Spain, but touching the North Africa and sort of into the the Middle East as well. There's less landfall on that one. So I think it's definitely the one where it's going down is going to be the better one to see. Just like a total solar eclipse, an annular eclipse happens when the new moon is between the Earth and Sun. But during an annular eclipse, the moon is positioned slightly farther away from Earth and doesn't quite cover the Sun's disk entirely. So a ring of sunlight can be seen around the moon and it's for this reason that an annular eclipse is called a ring of fire, which is lovely. I do like that term, ring of fire. I've been lucky enough to see a total solar eclipse and it is absolutely incredible. I very much do recommend if you can go and see that one in Spain, but I've always wanted to see an annular eclipse as well. I think that would be really interesting to see. And I've actually just remembered that's the one that's happening in 2028. There is an annular eclipse in Spain in 2028. There's two totals followed by an annular. So that's your holidays planned out from 2026 (laughs) to 2028. Absolutely. (laughs) You know where you're going. But yeah, I mean, like, you know, I've only seen one, well, it was a near total eclipse. That was the one in 1999. Mm, that was the one that was down in Cornwall, for those of us who weren't in the UK at that time. And without knowing at the time, planned a holiday. Oh, that was it. Yeah, you missed it, didn't you? <laughs> I know. Yeah. Every time there's an eclipse in the UK, I always seem to miss <laughs> it. But hopefully next time it will be, I'll miss it because I'll be seeing it in totality. <laughs> yes. Well, you know now it's going to be in Spain, so yes. there's no excuses. You can book a holiday and see the eclipse. So after the excitement of the annular eclipse, which unfortunately we won't be seeing, on the 5th, a crescent moon and Venus will be a lovely sight to see. So Venus will be above the 8% lit waxing moon, which will be low in the southwest after 6pm. This is going to be best seen through a pair of binoculars as the sky will still be quite light because the sun won't set until around 6 40 p.m. But yes, proceed with caution. If you're looking at Venus and the sun hasn't quite set yet, then, you know, beware of your eyes and, you know, take care not to to damage your eyes or equipment. So the solar system, the 30th is one of the best times to view four of the planets. We have three in the morning sky. We have Uranus, Jupiter, Mars, 
and in the evening sky you can try and catch a glimpse of Venus. So Venus is an improving evening planet as the weeks march on. So as I'm just going to talk about the planets that you'll be able to see in time order so you know what time to get up and see the planets that are best placed starting with the earliest. But luckily there isn't much time between seeing the planets at their best so you won't be hanging around for hours on end but obviously with the exception of Venus which is an evening planet. So Uranus is best seen at around 4.15 in the south. It will be high in the sky around 56 degrees and is in the constellation of Taurus. It will be at a magnitude of plus 5.66 so we have mentioned before although it's in the realms of being a naked eye target it's small, it's tricky you're going to need an optical aid to see it. There was a reason why Uranus wasn't found until after all the other planets were. It's dim. You need a fairly decent telescope to be able to see it. Yes, absolutely. And, you know, we've said it's, although it's a big planet, it's also very far away. So it's going to be hard, but go out there, challenge yourselves. You know, it'd be pretty satisfying to see that through your telescope eyepiece. Yeah, and Jupiter is very well placed, reaching a high altitude of approximately 60 degrees at around 5.15 a.m. in the south. And that can be found in the constellation of Taurus. And we also have Mars high in the sky at an altitude of 50 degrees in the southeast at around a similar time to Jupiter. And the red planet will be located in the constellation of Gemini between the twins. So within a period of about an hour, you can see three planets at their best, all within the south and the southeast. So this is a day you know, it's really worth kind of doing your planet spotting. You don't even need to whip your telescope around to the other half of the sky. No, They're very conveniently it. bunched together. And as you can see there, as you obviously our listeners can't see it, but in the image that I've shared with you, you can see Orion. Yeah, so you'd be able to see the planets and Orion because Orion's my favourite constellation. I know it's a very basic constellation, but it's got everything you want in there. It's got a really nice nebula. It's got two stars at different Life stages, completely different colours, and it's got all sorts of kinds of things going on. You can find it in Orion. And this month, it's also got two planets near it as well. So what more can you ask for? It is like signalling the beginning of autumn now, isn't it? When you can see Orion in the morning sky. Exactly. It's that sort of like it's heralding in the stargazing seasons. So the 30th is going to be a great day to get your observing in. And as I did mention, you know, Venus, let's not forget Venus on the 30th. It's very low in the evening sky, visible 20 minutes after sunset in the west. And if you have a clear and unobstructed horizon, you may be able to catch the planet for around 35 minutes before it disappears below the horizon. But, you know, this is a challenging planet to see, although it's bright. It's obviously following the sun. Mercury is, we said a couple of episodes ago, Mercury is a difficult planet. It's a very difficult planet. Yeah. Venus isn't that much easier. It's very, very bright. There's a reason why, it's, you know, it was called the morning star slash the evening star. But there is quite a short window. You do have to be careful. We always say it. Make sure you know when the sun's coming up. If you're watching it in the morning, if it's in the evening, wait until the sun has gone down. Venus, at least, it announces when it is up there. Yeah, I mean, if I had a clear horizon, obviously I'd have to go and try and, and drive somewhere. But I think it would be worth trying to view. But yeah, I'll definitely be giving the other three planets a go on the 30th. Hopefully some of our listeners will be able to take photographs as well of the planets on the 30th and share them with us. I'd love to see those, Eddie. Yeah. Absolutely. And if anybody does take any great photos that they'd like to share with us, potentially get them printed in the magazine, then please do email them in at contactus at skyatnightmagazine.com. Again, that's in the show notes down below. We always love having your images in. They're always great to see. And I'll just give tiny little Mercury <laughs> a mention. Obviously, it's not tiny, but from here it looks tiny. <laughs> it's the tiniest of the planets, of the major planets. Yeah, it's teeny tiny. Um, it's going to be a superior conjunction on the 30th, so you won't see this planet at all. And basically, it's just going to be hiding behind the sun. It's nice to know what it's up to. So the 1st of October, new month. Tonight on the 1st, planets Neptune and Saturn are at the best in the month of October. Both reach their highest points in the night sky at half past 11. They will both be in the south, so it's going to make observing them, you know, I say easy peasy because they're pretty close together. But Saturn will be in the constellation of Aquarius, while Neptune is in neighbouring Pisces. So 
yes, okay, I said it was going to be easy to see them, but Saturn's going to be really easy to spot, shining at a magnitude of plus 0.66, while Neptune is significantly dimmer at magnitude plus 7.81. Neptune is quite a tricky planet to see, but there is a great guide in the planet section of this month's issue of the Sky at Night, which will tell you everything you need to know about observing Neptune. And we always have a lot of information about everything that you can see throughout the month in our Sky Guide in the magazine. So if you want to really get into the details and see charts of all of these things that we're talking about, so you can really help find them, then do pick up the magazine and look at the Sky Guide in there. I do think the sky guides are so useful. You know, they're so well written and detailed. And uh, yeah, it's there's always something new to learn from them as well. So I think they are invaluable. Yes, our sky guides are written by Pete Lawrence, who is the sort of observing expert on the Sky at Night TV show. So he's got a lot of experience in finding really good things and bringing them to our audiences. Yeah, they are fantastic. So yeah, head over to the, the Sky at Night magazine to find out where to find Neptune. So on the 3rd, we have Titan. Saturn's largest moon will be visible below Saturn's South Pole at 10pm, best viewed through a telescope of six inches or larger. And we also have Dion on the 5th, another one of Saturn's moons worth looking out for tonight at around half past 11. The shadow of Dion will move across the surface of Saturn. And deep sky object wise, just quickly, whilst you're out observing Saturn this week, why not try and locate the Saturn Nebula with your telescope? It's also handily located in the constellation of Aquarius, where the planet Saturn is placed at the moment. It can appear greenish and yellow, and it is actually one of the brightest nebula, which shines at a magnitude of plus eight. It is so called because of its resemblance of the planet. Saturn and when you look at photographs of it it does really look like the planet Saturn. It does look like a big ball with rings going across it so that is again another one of those ones I'm not questioning why that was called what it was called. No it's pretty obvious isn't it yeah I just I like that it, you know the Saturn nebula kind of ties in with the planet Saturn this week so get out there and give it a go. Well, it certainly sounds like we've got a lot going on this week. So that's absolutely great. Thank you for taking the time to take us through all of that, Catherine. And if our listeners at home want to keep up to date with even more stargazing highlights, do subscribe to the podcast and we'll be back here next week with even more updates. But for now, let's summarise this week again. The moon will be waning throughout the week, reaching new moon on the 2nd of October. On the 30th, it will be the best time to view four of the planets. Uranus, Jupiter and Mars will be visible in the morning sky, while Venus will be in the evening sky. Unfortunately, Mercury will be hiding behind the sun at the moment, so you won't be able to see that. Then on the 1st, Neptune and Saturn will be at their best in October, reaching their highest points in the night sky at around about 11.30pm. On the 2nd of October, there's going to be a new moon, and there'll also be an annular solar eclipse, but it'll only be visible for people in parts of the Pacific Ocean, southern Chile and southern Argentina. And then on the third, Titan, Saturn's largest moon, will be visible below Saturn's south pole at 10pm. On the fifth, the crescent moon and Venus will be low in the southwest after 6pm. Saturn's moon, Dione, will transit Saturn at 11.30pm on that night as well. And throughout the week, if you're not observing Saturn, why not try observing the Saturn Nebula in the western part of the constellation of Aquarius as well? So lots to be getting on with in the night sky. Hopefully you'll get to see some great sights this week and we'll be back here next week with even more highlights. Goodbye. If you want to find out even more spectacular sights that will be gracing the night sky this month, be sure to pick up a copy of BBC Sky at Night magazine, where we have a 16-page pull-out sky guide with a full overview of everything worth looking up for throughout the whole month. Whether you like to look at the moon, the planets or the deep sky, whether you use binoculars, telescopes or neither, our sky guide has got you covered with detailed star charts to help you track your way across the night sky. From all of us here at BBC Sky at Night magazine, goodbye. Thank you for listening to this episode of the Star Diary podcast from the makers of BBC Sky at Night magazine, which was edited by Lewis Dobbs. For more of our podcasts, visit our website at skyatnightmagazine.com slash podcasts or head to Spotify, iTunes or your favourite podcast player. Mm-hmm.